Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here and welcome back to the Retro Future. We've got quite an interesting item here. This is the GB Game Jack, the Game Boy Game Jack. This is quite a rare item, very hard to get a hold of. I had to order it from Japan. I'm super excited to take a look at it. It's like nothing that you ever imagined existed for the Game Boy. Without any further ado, roll the intro. This thing is bloody cool. It's probably one of the coolest items we've ever looked at on this channel. The GB Game Jack. It's called the Game Jack, I think, because it's kind of hijacking the game. That's not its sole purpose. This thing does have a couple of different functions, but the main one that we're going to, in fact, the only one that we're going to be looking at really in this video is... Well, let's get into it. So the whole box is in Japanese, so we're not really gonna be able to take a look at what it says. Um, I have translated it and it's all pretty pointless stuff and it's what I'm gonna tell you anyway. Um, but there is two different variations of this that I have seen. There's one that comes with a four meg flash cart and then there's one that comes with a 12 and there's a, a few different boxed variations as well. I've not seen any of these come up on eBay. The only two I've seen have been on Yahoo auctions and I bought this using Sendico. Um, so inside the packaging is some manuals and leaflets and probably some warranty stuff. Again, all of it is in Japanese and I'm not going to go through trying to uh, translate every single little bit of it for you. But if you do want to pause this video and translate the back, you are more than welcome to. There's a few different uh, bits of information on there that might be helpful to you. But I'm going to go through it right now. As I said, just be patient, all right? Thank you. This is it in all of its very small, nice and translucent glory. Some people don't like this transparent stuff or translucent stuff, but I think it looks kind of cool. So there's two slots for cartridges. There's one right here and there's one right here. Uh, on the back here, we have some sort of a serial port or something for a PC, and then we've got a uh, mains plug, although you can also use a nine volt battery, which is what I've got plugged in, because there's two different things you can use this for, and one of them is a completely portable little thing. So it also comes with this flash cartridge. Now the other variation I've seen is 16 megabytes and has a couple of little buttons on here, like a switch, I think. Um, and I think there's also an eight megabyte one kicking about. Now, unfortunately, I'm gonna go with a four megabyte one, which means we're slightly restricted to the games that we can use this for but let me explain so there's a PC button and then there's an on button and then there's a select button and a start button now if you plug this into a PC there's various functions you can do you can back up your saves um, and also I believe you can put a ROM onto this cartridge from your PC so if you're a game developer or a coder then you can put the game that you've coded onto a game cartridge and plug it into a Game Boy and try it out. And I think the other variation of this that you can buy came with some software that allowed you to do that. Obviously, I don't have that, so I can't show you in this video, but that is one of the things that this thing was used for. The other thing it's used for is erasing saves from a game cartridge. So you plug it in, let me show you. You plug it in to uh, slot one, you turn it on, uh, and then you can go through and you can erase the save states. Now, I don't think there's a save state on Robocop. I don't think you can do that, but you press erase and then it will erase the save state. Now, the coolest thing that this thing can do, let me show you, is you plug in your Robocop and you plug in your game jack. You turn it on. Let's press start. And look, it's doing a bunch of things with some lights and then it does that. And then you can go over to verify and press start and it will verify that the ROM that's on here is now on here. So then we turn it off, we eject this, and now Robocop is on here. I know, how creepy is that? And the Game Boy that we shall try on is my random thing that I never titled. Let's plug it into the back and see what game is on it. Look at that. It's bloody Robocop in it. I can't believe it. It actually is a real thing that works. Absolutely unbelievable. So I highly doubt there's going to be any problems uh, with this because you're basically just taking off the, uh, the the ROM from the cartridge and you're putting it onto a, a ROM chip on another cartridge. So I don't think there's going to be any problems. Um, it's not like it's emulation, so that it's not you know, it's not gonna start showing any graphical glitches. There's a good chance it might crash later on in the game. So let me show you a different game. Uh, so we'll unplug Robocop. Here is Tetris. We shall plug this one in. You turn it on, you press start, and it's gonna do its thing. And then I will take the cartridge out, plug it in. 
And will it work? Boom, there is Tetris. How cool is that? So one of the things you could do with this is go to your mate's house, take their brand new game that they've just got and plug it into your game jack and then take it home with you. I think it's an absolutely awesome device. Um, I definitely don't think it was licensed by Nintendo, which is coming a bit of a catchphrase of mine. I'm gonna try a game in a minute that has a save state so we can see if the games actually save onto here. The other one I wanted to try is plugging in the Game Boy camera. Uh, I very much doubt this is gonna work. Uh, start. It's taking quite a while to transfer it over. I think it's gonna to be too big and I don't know how we're gonna be able to tell. It might just do that forever. Oh, it stopped. Oh my God, okay, off. What happened? <laughs> Are we gonna have a Game Boy camera without a camera? Ah, uh, wait, what does that mean? Ah, uh, ah, uh, it's not gonna work. I don't know what, why it's doing that now, but I don't think it's gonna work. Nah, that's not gonna work. Okay, the Game Boy camera one is clearly too big. I'd be interested to know what happened if we plugged the 16 megabyte one in, but I don't think that would, uh, I still don't think it's gonna work. Right, let me go and grab a game which has a save function and we can try that one out. Right, I've found a few bloody good ones. <laughs> right, so the first one we're gonna try is the long cartridge. Let's see what happens when we plug this in and try to clone it. Ooh, that's not, that's not feeling like it's even gonna go in. When low quality meets lower quality. <laughs> oh, we're in. Okay, let's try. Here we go. Turn it on. Start. Oh, it's done. Okay, off. Right. Let's plug it in and see what happens. We got the Nintendo logo. White screen. Absolutely nothing. White screen. Let's try one more time. Nah, that's not doing anything. White screen, unfortunately. Okay, well the long cartridge doesn't work. That is a shame. I've got Link's Awakening. Again, I think that's gonna be too big of a game to work, uh, but we can try. One thing I actually wanna do first is just erase what's on here. I think that will work. If we just press erase, will that make that? I don't know, who knows, but I don't know if that's gonna make any difference to this. So let's try Link's Awakening. That has got a save on it. So if in an ideal world, if this cartridge had a big enough memory, it would copy that over and the save, but I don't know if that's the case. Okay, it has stopped doing the thing, so uh, let's plug that in and see if that works. <gasps> oh, look, there's my save! It worked, it took the save as well. I mean, that is very cool. And it took Link's Awakening, which I thought was a way bigger game than that. Wow. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. As you can see, it is a thing that works sometimes depending on what you put inside it. In fairness, maybe we're expecting a bit too much of it by putting in some Game Boy cameras and fake cartridges and long cartridges, but I'm still very impressed by it. I think it's an absolutely awesome peripheral. Uh, I really hope you guys can find some out there in the wild because I actually think this has quite a beneficial application. It's, it's a very nice thing to have to be able to just clone some, some games. And uh, if someone could find a stock of these somehow, um, it would be amazing to take games that are maybe quite expensive like Trip World out with you and actually, I mean, I don't know what the benefit of having uh, this is over, you know, just buying like an aftermarket version of Trip World, but I guess it's kind of cool that you could maybe you know, feel as if you're cloning and actually playing on your official copy of it. I don't know. I don't know what the purpose of this thing is other than to rob your friend's games. Um, obviously, it may have just been an additional feature in an item that was geared more towards developers, um, but it's still a very cool feature and uh, that does not take away from the fact. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you all in the next video. Goodbye.